Today we're going to study SD 50.19, Sutta number 19 of SD 50, Chatuka Samyojana Sutta. The fourth discourse on the fetters. This is from A Anguttara, A 4.131. The theme here is the four kinds of saints in terms of rebirth and existence. And then this is a short sutta, it's quite a rare sutta, very special teaching, which we can only get if we really follow the suttas, study the suttas, and we love the suttas. We won't see this teaching in any uh, public talk or even a world conference or in the books or in some, in the biggest Buddhist dictionary you can find, or even the Buddhist encyclopedias that you can find today. This is one of those teachings which, uh, which is very simple in wording, but very profound in implications. We see here the Buddha telling us about the nature of awakening based on some well-known uh, sets of teachings, but given a slightly different twist, a different kind of arrangement, as it were, talking about the saints. Now, this teaching is based on the ten fetters, you know, Dasa, Sangyo, Chana. I think uh, we, uh, some of us are very familiar with this. Otherwise, you can always look up the notes on page 33, you can see table one one two. Now, uh, let's look at the first set. There are two sets. You've got the lower five and the higher five, lower fetters and the higher fetters. The they're called lower fetters because they hold us back. They fetter us back in the sense world. We are, in other words, dependent on the senses and. These five are the self-identity view, spiritual doubt, attachment to rituals and vows. Now these are the three key fetters which, if broken, makes us stream winners. This is the key practice we all as Buddhists actually aim for. Once you break the first three fetters, which are not really difficult, you start your journey on the path as a stream winner. You enter the stream towards awakening at most seven more lives to go. We learn to give up ideas of the self, try to understand non-self. We overcome doubt of the Dharma by studying the suttas, by practicing meditation or mindfulness to understand what we have learned and with what we have learned to improve our meditation, we go back and forth like that. And then letting go of rituals and vows. In other words, uh, we, we don't just repeat an action merely for its own sake. I mean, it's just like uh, there are a set of stairs there. And all we do is just kind of step up and down the stairs. Yeah, maybe you can say for exercising, but here this person has nothing to do, so it just goes up and down the stairs, so it's kind of useless. But if you walk up the stairs and you go upstairs, you reach your house. In Singapore, we have houses, uh, they're called flats and they're on different levels. So we walk up the stairs and we reach the house. So that's a, that's a wonderful purpose. Uh, you, you reach your house by going up the stairs. So we go through the path, we travel through the path to reach Nirvana not just going in circles. Ritual means going in circles. Uh, this doesn't mean all rituals are bad. We have simple rituals like bowing down, putting our palms together. But we do this meaningfully with all the three doors of actions involved. We mindfully think of the Buddha, Dharma or Sangha. We put our palms together to represent the lotus or some kind of uh, peaceful uh, symbolism, and then we say something, 
meaningful reflecting the Dharma. When we bow down three times too, we bow down to the first time to the Buddha, second, second time to the Dharma, and third to the Sangha. So all these are symbolic. They are, sim- they are meaningful ritual, not just uh, cyclic samsaric ritual in other words. So those are the three factors. Now, when the, when the stream winner is able to, with mindfulness or deeper meditation, able to overcome or weaken rather the the three unwholesome roots, the greed, hate, delusion, weaken them a bit, then he has only one more life to go. In other words, it's called a once returner, one more life to go and becomes awakened. So those are the five lower fetters. So today's Sutta talks about the five higher fetters. The five, we have number six to ten. Last for form existence, last for formless existence. Now these two together, six and seven, are called the fetters that obtain existence. In other words, they, they, these are the fetters of existence as we like. They, they keep us going. They keep the saint going in samsara. So in this case, you have the once returner, the once returner keeps going, so to speak. The the one who has broken all the five fetters, you have the non-returner, but still keeps going for a while. Uh, he's reborn in the pure boats, but he keeps going for a while. Then uh, you have eight, nine, ten, the last three. You have conceit, restlessness, and ignorance. Uh, these are called the fetters that obtain rebirth. So here is where we're talking about the non-returners. This they are fetters still, subtle fetters. They, uh, in a sense, condition, the conditions are still there for the non-returner to be reborn a few more times within the pure abodes to finish off uh, his karma. So that's called fetters that obtain rebirth. So these are the ten fetters, now, and this is how the suttas tell us in, in a new way the four kinds of saints. In this case, the, the sutta focuses on the one's returner and then the one bound upstream for Akanita and the one who attains Nirvana in between. And the last one is the Arhat. Now let's see how the sutta speaks to us about this. Now, we'll start with right at the top. Big shoes, there are these four kinds of persons existing in the world. What are the four? There are here big shoes. Some person has abandoned neither the lower fetters, nor the fetters that obtain rebirth, nor the fetters that obtain existence. So this person still is caught with the ten fetters, not awakened at all, not even on the path. Number two here. Uh, again, uh, because some other person has abandoned the lower fetters, but neither the fetters that obtain rebirth nor the fetters that obtain existence. Number three, here again, because some other person has abandoned the lower fetters and the fetters that obtain existence, but not the fetters that obtain existence. Uh, uh, th- sorry, the third line should be the fetters that obtain rebirth. Okay, Let me just read that again. The fetters that obtain rebirth, but not the fetters that obtain existence. Number four, here again, because some other person has abandoned the lower fetters and the fetters that obtain rebirth and the fetters that obtain existence. So you have these four kinds of uh, saints. Now the, the wording of this four kinds of saints are rather unique, agnematic even, because the, the first kind of saint is said to be the, the non-returner. Okay, so let, let's look at this elaboration first, section two. What person bhikshus who has abandoned neither the lower fetters nor the fetters that obtain rebirth nor the fetters that obtain existence? And then the Buddha answers, he is the once returner, Sakadagami. 
And this person, Bhikshus, has abandoned neither the lower fetters, nor the fetters that obtain rebirth, nor the fetters that obtain existence. So in other words here, uh, we've we got to look overall here. What the Buddha is saying is that the once returner has not abandoned the ten fetters as a set. Technically, uh, he has only abandoned the first three fetters and uh, uh, weakened the three unwholesome roots. So here you can see again the nature of early Buddhist teaching which is non-technical where the, the Buddha as if is talking of the fetters as a set. Right? So this is, it can little be, be a little confusing if you take doctrines in a straight dogmatic way. Right? So that is why we are reminded, we have to remind ourselves again and again that the, the early Buddhism is non-technical, non-dogmatic. The teachings tell us of our experience, in other words. It's not anything goes. It's, there are certain rules that are followed. There's a certain pattern of, of speaking, of teaching, which we must know. The idea of this kind of, uh, you, you can call it animatic approach, if you like, is in a sense to separate those who really follow the Dharma and those who just take the Dharma as a kind of technical study, a theory, and that's it. If you are practicing that you find uh, the words just help you to progress. They are not there as fixed ideas, so to speak. Okay, so in this uh, list, the, the, it starts with the once return. Okay? And then number two uh, is the, the one bound upstream for Akanita. Section three. What person, Bhikshus, has abandoned the lower fetters, but neither the fetters that obtain rebirth nor the fetters that obtain existence? He is the one bound upstream for Akanita. This person, Bhikshus, has abandoned the lower fetters, but neither the fetters that obtain rebirth nor the fetters that obtain existence. Now, this sounds complicated if we just look at the words. But once again, if you look at the diagram in the front of the chapter, table 112, you can see that the, this saying bound, for, bound upstream for Akanita has broken all the first, the first five, the lower fetters, but he has not broken the higher fetters. Okay, if you say higher fetters, it's easier to understand. Now, the term here, one bound upstream for Akanita, in other words, this uh, non-returner, his, his karma is such that he will go on through the different all the five levels, all the four more levels of uh, the pure abodes, and then finish off his karma and become an arahat in the pure abodes. That's the meaning here. Uh, of course, uh, if he goes on with his meditation and he puts in effort, he could do it faster in a manner of speaking. So, otherwise, he's said to be the one, he has he's overcome the five lower factors, but he's moving upstream one uh, rebirth after another, so to speak, or even uh, he could, like, uh, it, this is one part I must admit I'm not very sure exactly, whether this non-returner is reborn into each of the uh, uh, four or five um, levels of non-return, non-returning in, in the pure abodes, or he could, through his meditation, attain those levels. Uh, but we can have some idea that either one is possible. Now, number three is the one who attains nirvana in between. So this is the, the second kind of uh, non-returner, if you like. What person, Bhikshus, has abandoned the lower fetters and the fetters that obtain rebirth? but not the fetters that obtain existence. He is the one who attains nirvana in between, antara parinibhayi. 
this person, bhikshus, has abandoned the lower fetters and the fetters that obtain rebirth, but not the fetters that obtain existence. So here, uh, it's very interesting because the Buddha is telling us this particular non-returner, he has not, he has left this, our world here, but he has not reached uh, the pure abodes. Somewhere in between, he attains awakening. He is an arahat. So here is where uh, there is no more rebirth. Okay. So and there is, he has not broken the, the fetters for existence, but he, there is no more rebirth anyway. Okay. So this is the one who is awakened in between. And then you have the Arhat. What person bhikshus has abandoned the lower fetters, the fetters that obtain rebirth, and the fetters that obtain existence? He is the Arhat. Right? So in the case here, you have the Arhat. He has broken all the ten fetters, and he attains Arhathood that way. Um, of course, in, in the case of the Arahat, he is able to attain awakening much earlier, even before the the non-returner. That can be can be the case too. Whereas in the case of the non-returner, he, he kind of keeps on. Uh, he has to finish off his karma by staying or by being reborn in the pure abodes. So yes, this. Uh, Four kind of sins can be quite uh, tricky to understand, but the, the key idea to understand here is that the five higher fetters are of two kinds. You have uh, six and seven, that is beginning with the word last, the last for form existence, last for formless existence, refer to the fetters that obtain existence, fetter us to existence, keep us going in this life, if you like. And the rest, 8, 9, 10, concede restlessness and ignorance, keeps us, or keeps a non returner rather, reborn in the pure abodes until he reaches awakening, the last stage that is. So there's a bit of uh, psych deep psychology here, if you like. There are other technicalities which you can read in the notes here in case you are interested. So this gives us a kind of a, a, a close-up idea on, on what happens uh, in the minds of the non-returners, those who have attained that high level. So in that sense, as I said, this is a very interesting document, uh, kind of uh, giving us this amazing idea on the nature of awakening on a higher level. So for us uh, who are practicing as lay, uh, people, or even as monks, and we are interested to attain awakening in this life, we only need to remind ourselves to reflect on impermanence, on the changing nature of this present moment, every moment in our life. And once you keep on doing that habitually, constantly, attentively, and also it's good to kind of remind yourself, remind ourselves that we aspire to attain stream winning in this life itself. That helps then, the, according to the Anicca Chaku Sutta, S25.1, we will attain stream winning in this life itself, or definitely, declares the Buddha, at the moment of passing away. And then the rest would just kind of flow gently according to our karma, but certainly we will always be on the path until we reach awakening. And that's really wonderful news for us. So we end on a happy note. And now let us do a short reflection to close this study. It is still possible to awaken to Nirvana, to be totally free 
from the sufferings of this world, from suffering of any kind for that matter. If we keep to the teachings of early Buddhism, the, of the historical Buddha, and practice to understand our mind, our, the nature of self and so on, as being impermanent, reflecting in this way is, is wonderful good karma, by the power of such karma, may we be blessed with wisdom and courage to aspire at least to attain stream winning in this life itself. And by the power of the three jewels do let us send out our loving kindness to all our loved ones, to our teachers, to our to all those who are practicing the Dhamma to awaken in this life. May they attain spiritual freedom in this life itself. And also by the power of the three jewels, may all those who have difficulties who are lost, may they to see the true teaching in this life itself. May all beings be well and happy. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.